Vamandev has heard that Bali Maharaj is conducting an Ashwamedha Yajna, so he's proceeding to that place. While engaged in performing the sacrifice in the field known as Brigukachcha on the northern bank of the Narmada River, the Brahminical priests, the descendants of Brigu, saw Vamandev to be like the sun rising nearby. So these are the priests who are performing the, the sacrifice and they're seeing that Vamandev, Lord Vamandev is so effulgent. Te ritvijo yajamana sadasya hatatvisho vamana tejasa nirpa surya kilayat yuta va vipavasu sanatkumarota tradrikshaya krito. O king, because of Vamanev's bright effulgence, the priests, along with Bali Maharaj and all the members of the assembly, were robbed of their splendor. Thus they began to ask one another whether the sun god himself or Sanat Kumar or the fire god had personally come to see the sacrificial ceremony. So the Bali Maharaj was the Yajamana, the person on whose behalf the sacrifice was being performed. And he and the priests were all uh, wondering that we're, uh, we have a little effulgence, but his effulgence is, is so great. So who is this person? Uh, they were uh, wondering. Itam sasheshu pragush vane kata vitar kyamano bhagavan savamanaha chatram sadandam sajalang kamandanum Vivesha vibrat tayameda vyat vatam. While the priests of the Brigu dynasty and their disciples talked and argued in various ways, who is this? Why is happening? While they were talking in that way, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vamandev, holding in his hands the rod, the umbrella, and a water pot full of water, entered the arena of the Ashwamedha sacrifice. So this is who he was. They, they were wondering, is it the sun god? Is it Sanat Kumar? Is it somebody else? Uh, but here, Bhagavan Vamandev, he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That we know, but they may not know. Manuja Mekalaya Vitam Upavita Jinotaram Shatilam Vamanam Vipram Maya Manavakam Harim Pravishtam Viksha Pragava Sashishyaste Sahagni Pihi Pratchagrinan Samuttaya Sankshiptas Tasyate Jasa Appearing as a Brahmin boy, wearing a belt of straw, a sacred thread, an upper garment of deer skin, and matted locks of hair, Lord Vamandev entered the arena of sacrifice. His brilliant effulgence diminished the brilliance of all the priests and their disciples, who thus stood from their seats and welcomed the Lord properly by offering obeisances. The a significant word here is maya manavakam, a, uh, the illusory son of a human being, a person who appeared to be a human being, but wasn't. Uh, the by the Lord's internal potency, by his uh, yoga maya potency, naham prakasha sarvasya yoga maya samadhata muto yam navijanyata. The uh, ordinary people can't see uh, Krishna uh, because he's covered 
by his illusory potency or his, his internal potency. The elsewhere, that same thing is said in the first canto. Kritavan kila karmani saharami na keshava ati martyani bhagavan guta kapatamanusha that the <clears throat> a lord along with Lord Balaram, Krishna performed his pastimes as if a human being. Guta uh, kapatamanusha, uh, keeping his real identity hidden. Uh, this is Krishna's way of doing things. He reveals and conceals. Uh, when Krishna appeared in Vrindavan, the same thing happened. <laughs> he was revealed and concealed. Yoga Maya means the potency that reveals and conceals the Lord. So he was concealed from demons like Kamsa. They thought he's an ordinary uh, human being. They couldn't recognize that he was the Supreme Personality of Godhead because of their demonic mentality. And on the other side, the Brajbasis also couldn't recognize that Krishna was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That was also the influence of Yoga Maya, but acting in a different way. Uh, Kangsa couldn't understand Krishna's identity because he was a demon. And the Brajbasis couldn't understand Krishna's identity because of their love for him. If they thought of Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then they couldn't play with him as coward boys. They couldn't uh, scold him as his elders. Uh, they couldn't uh, enjoy the same exchanges of transcendental devotional service uh, without this intervention by yoga maya by which she conceals that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. So this is Parasha Shakti Vividaiva Shriyate, Krishna's potencies work in different ways. And yoga maya works that way to sometimes reveal and sometimes conceal the glories of the Lord, the identity of the Lord, the, uh, yes. So he, Krishna and Balaram appeared to be like ordinary human beings. Uh, but when, um, when they wished, they would show extraordinary activities. So here also, uh, with a specific purpose to cheat uh, Bali Maharaj, uh, to cheat Bali Maharaj, and really to bless Bali Maharaj, the Krishna is appearing as a, a Brahmin boy. Yajamana pramudito darshani manoramam rupanu rupa vayavam tasma asanam aharat. Bali Maharaj, jubilant at seeing Lord Vamandev, whose beautiful limbs contributed equally to the beauty of his entire body offered him a seat with great satisfaction. Uh, so Bali Maharaj didn't know who this was, but he could see he's so beautiful. His bodily features are so attractive. So uh, from Murita, he was jubilant to see. This is obviously a uh, someone wonderful. Swagatena bhinandyata Pado Bhagavato Balihi Avani Jyar Chayamasa Mukta Sangha Mano Ramam Thus offering a proper reception to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is always beautiful to the liberated souls. Bali Maharaj worshipped him by washing his lotus feet. So Krishna is Mukta Sangha Mano Ramam. He's attractive, especially to those who are Atmaramas or uh, liberated souls. Mukta Sangha, who are free from material contamination. Uh, Mano Ramam, 
is pleasing to their minds. Tatpadasho cham janako mashapaham sadharma vin vurnyat adhat sumangalam yadeva devo girishas chandra maulir tatadam vurdna pariyacha bhaktya. Lord Shiva, the best of demigods, who carries on his forehead the emblem of the moon, receives on his head with great devotion the Ganges water emanating from the toe of Vishnu. Being aware of religious principles, Bali Maharaj knew this. Consequently, following in the footsteps of Lord Shiva, he also placed on his head the water that had washed the Lord's lotus feet. I'm going to skip the purport because I'm going to come back to it. Shri Bali Ruvacha Swagatam Te Namas Tubyam Brahmam Kim Karabamate Brahmarshi Nam Tapa Sakshan Manye Tvarya Vapur Dharam. Bali Maharaj then said to Lord Vamandev, O Brahman, I offer you my hearty welcome and my respectful obeisances. Please let us know what we may do for you. We think of you as the personified austerity of the great Brahman sages. Ajana pitara stripta, Ajana pavitam kulam, Ajya srishta kritur ayam, Yad Bhavan Agato Grahan. O my Lord, because you have kindly arrived at our home, all my forefathers are satisfied. Our family and entire dynasty have been sanctified, and the sacrifice we are performing is now complete because of your presence. Adyagneo me suhuta yata viti, trajat majat twach charanav and age and I he. Hatam haso barb here, the yam chapur aho, tata punita, tonupi padaistava. O son of a Brahmin, today the fire of sacrifice is ablaze according to the injunction of the Shastra. And I have been freed from all the sinful reactions of my life by the water that has washed your lotus feet. O oh my Lord, by the touch of your small lotus feet, the entire surface of the world has been sanctified. Yad yad vato vantrasi tat pratij chame tvam artinam vipra sutanukar Sutanutar kaye, gam kanchanam gunavad tam amrishtang, tatana peyam, utava viprakanyam, graman, samridhams, turugan kajanva, latams tatar hattama, sampratich cha. O son of a Brahmin, <coughs> It appears that you've come here to ask me for something. Therefore, whatever you want, you may take from me. O oh, best of those who are worshipable, you may take from me a cow, gold, a furnished house, palatable food and drink, the daughter of a Brahmin for your wife, prosperous villages, horses, elephants, chariots, whatever you desire. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the 8th canto, 18th chapter, Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Vamandev, the dwarf incarnation. So Bali Maharaj is a Kshatriya. The duty of the Kshatriyas is to give charity to the Brahmins. He's both a kshatriya and a householder. The duty of a householder is to give charity and the duty of a kshatriya is to give charity. 
So on both counts, he has a duty to give charity to the uh, Brahmin. And also he's influenced by the effulgence of this, uh, the beauty, beauty and effulgence of this Brahmin boy. Uh, that's uh, natural. The, uh, when someone is very uh, good looking, impressive, uh, he's attractive and we, we think, oh, you're someone special. Some people just by their, uh, when they walk in the room, you see, oh, here's a very special person. Uh, either they, in different ways, like a, a Kshatriya, he, when he walks in the room, everyone knows he's a leader. You know, he's just got, you, you can see that there's, he's organized, he's, he's checking everything out, he's on top of things, he's powerful. Uh, and very quickly, if there's 20 people in the room, there'll be 19 followers and him. So, and, and he, just like uh, Jarasandha, he, he saw, even though uh, the Pandavas, uh, Arjun and, and Bhima were dressed like Brahmins, he, he saw these aren't Brahmins, they're Kshatriyas. Look how they're built. You know, Kshatriyas are like solid guys. So uh, by their, uh, yes, by their very nature. And a Brahmin, uh, he'll be peaceful, he'll be uh, effulgent, he'll be uh, in, in so many ways uh, representing the quality of goodness. Practically knowledge emanates from his, his presence. And people see, here, here's, here's someone, uh, he's, he's not running around looking for money, looking for this, looking for that, looking over his shoulder, disturbed, anxious. He's cool, he's, he's peaceful, he's... Uh, so uh, this... And sometimes people are extraordinarily, uh, they're just the Brahminical qualities almost emanate from their, their bodies, from their, their presence. So uh, here, Vamandev was like that to an extraordinary degree. He was so effulgent, so beautiful. Uh, everything about him just said, uh, oh, special person. And therefore, Vamandev, not Vamandev, Bali Maharaj felt uh, joyful. Uh, <laughs> felt joyful that he's such a, uh, this is obviously a special Brahmin boy who's come to bless our sacrifice. So he at once uh, spontaneously offered, what would you like? What can I give you? You, you must have come here for something. Uh, so chariots, uh, horses, uh, a wife, elephants. Uh, what would you like? What can we give you? Villages? Uh, naturally, Bali Maharaj spontaneously uh, offer these things. Now let's go back to text 28. Lord Shiva, the best of demigods who carries on his forehead, the emblem of the moon, receives on his head with great devotion, the Ganges water emanating from the toe of Vishnu. Being aware of religious principles, Bali Maharaj knew this. Consequently, following in the footsteps of Lord Shiva, he also placed on his head the water that had washed the Lord's lotus feet. Purport, Lord Shiva is known as Gangadhara, or one who carries the water of the Ganges on his head. On Lord Shiva's forehead is the emblem of the half moon. Yet to give supreme respect to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Shiva placed the water of the Ganges above this emblem. This example should be followed by everyone, or at least by every devotee, because Lord Shiva is one of the Mahajanas. Similarly, Maharaj Bali also later became a Mahajana. One Mahajana follows another Mahajana. 
and by following the parampara system of Mahajana activities, one can become advanced in spiritual consciousness. The water of the Ganges is sanctified because it emanates from the toe of Lord Vishnu. Bali Maharaj washed the lotus feet of Bamandev and the water with which he did so became equal to the Ganges. Bali Maharaj, who perfectly knew all religious principles, therefore took that water on his head, following in the footsteps of Lord Shiva. Though there are uh, 12 Mahajans, uh, great persons, Swayambhu Narada Shambhu Kumara Kopila Manu, uh, Prahlad Janaka Bhishma, Bali Vyasaki, Bayam Yamaraj. So Lord Shiva is one of the Shambhu, Lord Shiva is one of the Mahajanas. He's called Chandramoli because he carries this emblem of the, the moon uh, on his head. Uh, Chandramoli, uh, yes. So he, uh, and he's, uh, yes. And he's one of the Mahajans, uh, a great, a great devotee of the Lord. Prabhupada one time was giving this list, maybe talking to a Pendra or someone. And he, he recited that uh, Swayambhu, Lord Brahma, Narada, Lord Shiva, uh, the Kumaras, um, Dev, Manu. In this way, there are 12 Mahajans. And the devotee said to Srila Prabhupada, and you're the 13th Srila Prabhupada. And Prabhupada said, and you're the 14th. So, Mahajana Yena Kata Sapanta, one should uh, follow in the footsteps of the Mahajans. And as Prabhupada says here, uh, one Mahajan follows another Mahajan. So, the business of the Mahajans is to engage in devotional service to the Lord and show the proper line of action by ideal activities. So Lord Shiva keeps the Ganges water on his head because that water washes the lotus feet of the Lord. Of course, we're a little, um, what's the word, going backwards and forwards here in time because Lord Shiva is being described as keeping the Ganges water on his head. But uh, that happens after Lord Vamandev uh, pierces the water, pierces the, the universe, the shell of the universe and the Ganges water comes through. But still, these are like eternal signs of Lord Shiva. Just as Lord Krishna, he, at some point he's given his, his Sudarshan chakra, at other times he's given this and that. All those things are actually his eternal paraphernalia. But as a pastime, at some point he's given the chakra, at some point he's given the, the shangabo, at some point he's given this, at some point he's given that. Uh, given the things that are already his and that are eternally associated with him. So Lord Shiva also, he's known as uh, Gangadhara. Uh, he's known uh, for these activities. And the Bali Maharaj is uh, following. Mahajanayena Gata Sapanta. So this is the Parampara system. The, to follow in the footsteps of the Mahajans, to take shelter of a pure devotee of the Lord, and follow. Without following a pure devotee of Krishna, no one can attain success in Krishna consciousness. Everything begins in this way, that we have to follow the parampara system. And then we'll be purified, then we'll 
be properly trained in Krishna consciousness, then we'll be properly connected with Krishna. Evam prampra praptam imam rajarshiyo viduhu. All right, I'll stop here and see what kind of questions there might be. Thank you, Maharaj. I'll just unmute everyone so that they'll be able to ask their questions. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. I'm wondering if there, this is Gail. I'm wondering if there's any particular reason that the Lord had for um, appearing as a dwarf Ramana instead of a regular size one. <laughs> I, I don't know. The Adbuta Vamana, he's um, a transcendental person. He does as he likes. I don't know if there's a particular reason. Anyone else know? Well, I was speculating that he might have done that for dramatic em emphasis when he took his three steps. <laughs> you know, because for dramatic. yeah, that's a good a good point that he appears to be not only a Brahmin but just a little Brahmin. So he's going to go from being a, a, a small Brahmin to being a gigantic size. Yeah, that's a good point. And he's, um, the word, not threatening. You know, he's just a little Brahmin boy. Certainly there's not going to be any any loss to, to Bali Maharaj from giving charity to a little Brahmin boy. Uh, that's, that's there. Uh, I don't know of any other reasons. I haven't seen a comment on it. Good question. I just don't have much to, to say. No, that, that's good enough for me for now. <laughs> good enough for you. Are there other questions? That word, um, Chandra Mali, um, the Mali, is that, does that mean the emblem? I'm going to tell you in exactly one, well, I'm not going to say exactly, but I'm going to look it up for you. Uh, Chandra Mali. Mali means the head or the, the top of, it, of oh. anything. So, uh, or a, a crown can mean that also. So his head is crowned, as it were, by the moon. Lord Shiva is a very unconventional person. He doesn't wear uh, the usual ornaments. Uh, he's uh, got a, a, a cobra as a necktie. He's got a garland of, of skulls and bones and, and wears uh, weeds instead of you know, lotuses. And he carries the symbol of the, uh, so he appears to be a little mad or uh, certainly unconventional. And Srila Sanatana Goswami comments on this in Brihad Bhagavatamrita. Uh, these are all signs of his renunciation. He practically mocks the puffed up people of this world. You, you, you want to wear garlands, you want to wear nice clothes, you want to decorate yourself with this and that. Well, I'll decorate myself with ashes, uh, not your the perfume that you spend so much money on in the airport. I'll, I'll decorate my body with, with ashes and with these old uh, weeds and with uh, skulls and bones from the crematorium. Uh, in this way, practically mocking the the opulence of the demi, the, the other demigods. But his supreme ornament uh, is the Ganga. Even the, the moon, which is another ornament of Lord Shiva, 
is less important than the the Ganga. Um, that he's Chandramoli is less of a credit than his being Gangadhar, the person who carries on his head the, the Ganga. Uh, what is the significance of, Murli Gopal asks, what is the significance of the moon? Uh, Nakshatrana Maham Shashi, it's the king of, it's the, the principal star among the stars. Uh, it's an important uh, place for uh, American defense activities and the intergalactic <laughs> thing. There are various significances of the moon. Uh, the moon also in, in, in Vedic uh, thought represents the mind. The mind and the moon are, are connected. The moon is the presiding deity of the mind. In astrology also, the moon is the presiding deity of the mind. And even our, we have our Western word, lunatic, English word, lunatic, because it was thought, and perhaps not without reason, that the phases of the moon influence the uh, minds of men, and that the madmen are uh, they become more mad on the full moon days. So these are some of the things that the moon um, represents. Why Lord Shiva wears the moon? That is another question. That is another question. I'm sure there's a, there's a good answer to that in, uh, in the Shiva Kata department, but I don't know. I'm not that conversant in Shiva Kata. Gorkumar asks, how is it that Bali Maharaj became a Mahajan when for most of his life he became, he behaved like a demon? Yeah, even a, a demon can become a Mahajan. The Prabhupada talks in Chaitanya Charitamrita about uh, naked mother uh, logic. When, when she was a little child, your mother was naked, so she must be naked now. That's naked mother logic. No, that <laughs> logic doesn't fly. Uh, he may have been a demon for his whole life, but as soon as he surrendered to Krishna, he became a Mahajan. Uh, he became a Mahajan. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, even that, uh, who was that? Ajamil. He was a low life of the first order. But because he chanted the holy name of Narayan, he became a, a great soul. Uh, Vishnu Jan, he became one of Lord Vishnu's men. So this, all these past discredits can at once be uh, wiped out. Karmani nir dhatikintu ja bhakti bhajan. Uh, Govindamadi Purusham Tamahan Prajavan. To be a demon is the result of or manifestation of past karma, but all past karma is wiped out as soon as one uh, engages in devotional service. Was Bali Maharaj a demon by species or by inclination? Yes, by, by family heritage, he was a demon. Prahlad Maharaj was also a demon. From that point of view, what is that? Parlada uh, Chasmi Daityana in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says, among the demons, I'm Parlada. So Parlada is categorized as a demon because he's the son of a demon. He's coming in the, the demon dynasty, as it were. So he's uh, Daityaraj. He's the king of the demons. But even such a demon by family heritage can become a, uh, a great soul. Indra, before the birth of Prahlad Maharaj, was ready to uh, kill the child in the womb of the mother because he thought that this is the son of, of Hiranyakashipu. 
So Hiranyakashipu is bad enough. We don't want to have to, to, to deal with his son. So he was ready to kill the child. But Narada stopped him that no, he's going to be a great devotee. So by, by heritage, Bali Maharaj was a demon, but that can change. And by inclination, well, yes, he conquered the demigods. So from that point of view also, that's the definition of uh, demon, that they're against the Lord or, and against the Lord's devotees. So he was opposing uh, what Indrari, he was, uh, Krishna comes, Indrari Vyakulam Lokam, Mridiyanti Yuge Yuge, to subdue the enemies of Indra. The Lord is partial to Indra and the demigods. They're his uh, chosen ad administrators. And Bali Maharaj was opposing them. Of course, you can say that was his family business to, to fight with the demigods. But anyway, by his activities, also you can say he was demonic. But he was honored. He's honored because he surrendered everything to mom and Dave. Same thing also is there that Vibhishan, he's coming in the same family as Ravana, but Vibhishan surrenders to Ram. Uh, no, don't, don't, no, don't, 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 uh, Lord Ram, it's a trick. Don't, don't, uh, don't be fooled by him. No, he's surrendering to me. I accept him. Uh, and Vibhishan helped Lord Ram in defeating Ravana. So any, anyone, although may a demon by, by birth, by family tradition, by bad association, by whatever reason, can be purified. Uh, what is that? Kiratukun Andra Palinda Pulkasha. Yen ye japa pa yadapa shreya shreya. Then, yen ye japa pa yadapa shreya shreya shyanti tasmai prabhu vishnu vedam. Even whatever uh, low birth one, one may have taken, uh, one can be purified by the association of those who've taken shelter of Krishna. 